Welcome to The Big Picture with Katrina Fulcher Rood and Ani Castilla Earls, where they discuss how research in speech language pathology can be implemented in daily clinical practice. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm Katrina. And I am Annie. And we are still at the lovely home of Ani here in Houston, Texas. And today what we wanted to do is talk to you about some standardized tools that can be used for the three-year-old to kind of nine-year-old population. These tools are research-based. They're diagnostically accurate, but they're not as widely used as maybe the SELF or the PLS. So that's why we decided to talk about them, because we know they're really good tools, but not as widely used. And so what's kind of the first tool that you want to talk about today? So I'm going to start with, what do you think? Let's start with the TEGI. Mm -hmm. So this is the TEGI, for those of you who have never seen it before. So it's a test of early grammatical impairment. And so what age range is appropriate for Ani, or what does this test really look at and examine? So it is standardized between, for children between three years and eight years and 11 months, so three to nine mm -hmm. are appropriate children for them. Um, it is specifically directed for grammatical structures. Okay. So remember we have been talking in previous episodes that sometimes one of the downsides of using standardized tests and especially this big test, right, like the cell or the PLS, is that they include bigger language skills. And sometimes those tests are missing the children who have specific difficulties at the grammatical level, correct? Yes, and I think it would be really good, uh, just as a refresher, if you want to refer back to our episode on specific language impairment, because these are some assessments that might be really good for those children, especially for those grammatical issues that they might be experiencing, like difficulty with regular past tense or omission of third person singular. So getting in on those grammar issues that we know are hallmark of specific language impairment children. You should also go back and check out our chapter, our episode on sensitivity and specificity and composition intervals because we're going to refer to some of those things today. So again, going back to the Rice and Wexler test of early grammatical impairment, um, it has a scale that you can use to identify children with language impairments and it also has a screening test. Oh, that's great. So yeah. there's a screening and a full version. Correct. And some of the subtests or some of the areas that you're going to be testing more specifically are things like the third person singular, the past tense, the use of the verb to be and the auxiliary do. And also you're going to check a couple things on agreement, the children that drop some markers or that drop the present progressive. And one thing that I want to note, and we'll make sure that we provide the link in the bottom, that uh, at first this was published by Psychological Corporation through Pearson. However, this is now available for free. The manual, the complete version of the test, as well as the screener and all the stimulus, uh, the scoring booklets, all something that you can get for free. Correct. And this is one of those tools that it has a lot of research behind it, right? It was based on research findings. And what I like the most, I cannot see it now. Okay, here. I have it in the manual that now you have available as a PDF online. You're going to find many different tables with all the age groups for each of the subtests and for the big scale, telling you this level of sensitivity and specificity at different scores. Oh, so that means for all of those different subtests, not just an overall score or not just the TEGI in general, you can really get specific to know if that subtest that maybe is just looking at third person sing singular, how accurate is that at identifying typically developing children as well as children with language impairment? Not only that, you can also sort of choose your own score, hmm. right? If you're interested in getting more children with language impairments, you can raise the score or you can lower as needed as long as you take into account how is it affecting your sensitivity and your specificity. 
I think that's great because that's really getting at uh, the clinic, our clinical judgment and our clinical expertise that we know that we have about these children as we're assessing them. So now I have some friends here. So the reason, why, like I have them, <laughs> the reason why I have them is the test is now available for free. The initial version of the test um, included manipulatives, right? Now since it's for free and online, well, you will know The manipulatives don't come to you through email. Yes, but today when I emailed Dr. Mabel Rice to see what was her advice about what people were doing, she said, well, if you check into the manipulatives, they are relatively easy to get on your own. And hey, you're getting a test absolutely for free. My lab paid for it when we were doing research with that a couple of years ago. But look, so this is an example of some of the manipulatives that you're going to need. So you have three bears in three different colors that I'm sure you can just get you know good dollar store find, good dollar store and another example you might you're gonna need an apple it's a toy apple just in case you cannot appreciate that <laughs> i think i've seen these in your playroom and you need, <laughs> yes actually you have <laughs> and you can also you're gonna also gonna need a couple of puppets so you know and you, if you find a manipulative you will have your whole testing ready to go available for free with really good research evidence and we researchers designing this test. So you know they are targeting the structures that we know identify children who are typically developing from children with language disorders. And it sounds like the techie is great, but I also know that there's another tool that we also wanted to talk to you about today. So what's that one? So now this, I think when I talk about this test and I'm in big conference and I say, how many of you, this happens to me <laughs> last time where I was at the conference in New York uh, I say, okay, how many of you have used the spelt? And only one person raised their hand. And I say, are you a researcher? And she said, yes. I'm like, yes, that's why. So it's one of those, again, amazing tools that is only being used by us researchers and that we know is so accurate that I'm like, oh, we really need to talk about these tools and tell the people to use it. So this is the, oh, wait a minute. This is the spelt, a structure photographic expressive language test. So we have the preschool version, which is at uh, second edition, and we have the school age version, which is at the third edition. So this is the interesting thing about this test, Kat. They mm -hmm. are pictures, right? Oh. So if you take a look. And they're like, nice real pictures, not yeah, nice real. A little bit, you know, like I think new wagons are slightly different. <laughs> so they are not the most updated pictures ever. But, so this is one interesting thing about this, right? So these are pictures and I'm going to try to take a look at some of the items. You administer the items. It's actually relatively easy to administer. This test you administer in 10 minutes with no problem. Um, we That's do a nice it, quick test. We do it with large groups of children when we're doing research and the spell is something that you can administer relatively quickly. Uh, and it's always targeting, I think, what is targeting is syntax and grammar. So I'm going to give you some of the examples and hopefully we'll also you also see the picture that is on the test. As an example, say it says, tell me about this picture. And then you say, here is one glass and here are two glasses. Glasses, correct. <laughs> right? So you'll see exactly what is the target if the child says the correct answer. Of course, you're giving them a point and if the child says two glass, then you know that the child might be having difficulties with the plural marking. Um, so it has production of sentences, passes, passives. Um, and you know what else I really like about this testing form? And I've been uh, working with some SLPs and showing them this form. And the one thing that they really like is that each test item, it tells you the exact target, the um, exact grammatical marker. So you're really able to make this really nice chart and table at the end to see what they've mastered, what's inconsistent, and what they're not using. And it's a really great analysis tool because the test administration booklet, there's no question. It tells you the exact grammatical markers that it's looking at. So if you buy the test and you read the manual, the interesting thing is that you know, nowhere in the manual it, re it refers to its own sensitivity or specificity. So you're going to be like, wait a minute, what are they doing? They're talking about this test as being a good test and in the manual it doesn't say anything about the diagnostic accuracy, which is something we have told you before that is important about tests. The tricky part about the spelt, the trick and the good part, is that external people from the designers, the writers of the test, are the ones who have evaluated the efficacy 
or the diagnostic accuracy of the test. So Dr. Elena Plante and colleagues have done a lot of research on the test and you're gonna see in the links at the end of the episode. Um, we have evidence that both the spelled preschool and the spelled the school age form, the spelled three and the spelled P2 have very good sensitivity and specificity. And that's great to know that you know, I know it seems maybe a little tricky that it's not in the manual, but it's great that there's research evidence, it's from external reviewers, and it is showing that good sensitivity and specificity. And sometimes it's good to have external reviewers to mm -hmm. test the diagnostic accuracy of the test because then all those potential conflict of interest mm -hmm. are removed, right? So you are more confident with other people. It's not only, oh, I designed this test, it's so great, it's so wonderful, right? It's also pretty good when other people are using it at being tested in other settings with other population and they find that the test is good and that it works. And so Ani, what's the big picture? What's the takeaway? Well, the takeaway is that these are two tools that are relatively easy to acquire. Something I forgot to mention is just the spelt. It's around $200. So it's not a it's not an $800 test like we are used to buy for mm -hmm. in a speech language pathology. And the take is for free and we know has really good diagnostic accuracy and is going to help you identify those children who truly need the services, those children with specific language impairments that remember are those that we don't always identify. And so step out a little bit outside of your box and give one of these new tools a try in one of your assessments. And you know, Ani, it would be great to hear from some of our viewers if you are using these tools, what's your experience with them, go on, take a look at the Teggy manual or take a look at the screener and let us know what you think and let us know what questions you have. And, and I, I am gonna say, really, we really wanna know <laughs> your part we really want to know you say no i don't want to use it i want to use it tell us what you're thinking because that help us to plan our episodes that help us to understand what are your needs it help us to know if what we are doing is actually making any sense to you mm -hmm. we know that the videos are being watched we know we have followers on youtube and facebook and <laughs> facebook but we and we have get, gotten very positive feedback so people have left comments on our facebook page People tend to send us emails, there are mm -hmm. some comments on, on YouTube, but we really want to increase the number of comments, whether they're good or bad, we just want to get some feedback from you. So we are spending a lot of time getting those videos for you. And we really want to have a conversation. So let's have a conversation and let's have that dialogue with one another, positives, negatives, pros, cons, um, and so that we can really make sure that this is working for everybody. And so how can people get a hold of us so that we can really have that conversation, which is something that we're excited about and want to have. So if you haven't liked our page on Facebook, the big picture blog, you can still do it. Please look us up and like us and also, if you know someone who you think can benefit from liking the page, please invite them to take a look at the page and see if maybe they will find it useful. And you could also send us an email at thebigpicturevlog at gmail.com. You can subscribe here on YouTube and leave a comment below. And thank you so much for joining us again. And remember to keep on thinking about the big picture.